Hey, Love Show, Backspin, Sirius XM. Honor and the privilege to have my boy in the building. I haven't seen this dude in such a long time. Straight from Ultra Magnetic MCs, uh, Black Elvis himself, Doc Octagon, all of the above. My man Cool Keith is in the building. What up, bro? What's up? What's up, Ed? You I'm know, good, man. I always see you. You know, I always see you. You know, I always got love for you. Every time I see yeah, you, yeah, we still bump into you in some of the weirdest places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you just pop up anywhere. Yeah. it could be the All Star Game. Mm -hmm. It could be the Super Bowl. We could be in Atlanta. You could be in New York, L.A., Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I see. Matter. I just see you come out of nowhere. <laughs> and Brian Coleman's here too. He wrote the book. Check the technique. Rakim told me There's a lot of books Brian wrote. Uh, yeah, You're a line of note junkie, huh? I am, I am. I always have been. I mean, I'm a fan. I just want to uh, I want to know more about all these albums and these artists. and <laughs> So I just call them up and hopefully they don't hang up on me and, and, and talk and I, I kind of pick their brains a little bit. Did, so. it take him, did it take you a long time to trust him enough, Keith? Uh, well, he... I saw one book he wrote, so I, I, I kind of trusted him on the second one. But right. when, I, when he first called me, I was like... We was talking, I was like, well... I always do an interview anyway. I don't care if it's a, <laughs> a, a, it could be anybody off the street. Joe right. Neckbone calling me. I just want, I, I don't know where he might pop up. He might be in a magazine, you know. I, right. I've had a lot of people that I probably didn't think they was an editor or, you know, a, a, a journalist or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just might have disrespected them or something. Right. <laughs> and next thing you know, they was like, oh, they write for that. Yeah. You know, but... I ninety nine percent of the time I do all the interviews. Okay. I don't right. have that much power. I can't I can't really destroy Keith's career even if I wanted to. Yeah. And I yeah. never would. It's a right. Stella. It's too Stella. <laughs> yeah, it cannot be destroyed. It's well at least much. he writes a respectable book. Like, you got a lot of magazines and publications out here that just came out yesterday and they're trying to have the authority to write about a rapper or a prediction of the album. How are you gonna write about anybody from a certain time and you just came out? Yesterday, right. You know what I'm saying, right? You well, you ain't been around long enough. Yeah. Right. You don't have a, a certain amount of respect for the music, or you don't. Actually, you don't have that. You know, we don't have enough respect for you. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> You're trying to make a name for yourself or somebody else's back. Yeah. Tell me about the uh, the early days of Ultra Magnetic, man. Well, you know, Ultra was going to do shows. We was, you know, hot with Ego Trip. It was hot on the streets. I was talking to, you know, some people on the phone about it. it was like that record was hot, like. Rock him record, yeah. Um, the bridge with Shan, um, that was like, I mean, you go to sleep at night, somebody passing the block with, with the record. See, I was thinking about like, now, you don't hear all the hits on the cars riding by. Back then, you heard all the hits. You could tell the hottest record because a dude is walking with a box passing you, a dude right. is passing you in a station wagon, a jeep is passing you, right. Another car is passing you. You could tell the record is hot. Now, you know, we got these, you know, we got. You know the iPod people, right. so you can tell yeah. it was hot. That's yeah, that's true. That's true. It's, it's in somebody's ear. Yeah, so it's personal mm. now. It's not shared like no, it was. Like no. when I had the four fifteens in the yeah. back of the past. Yeah, you get public enemy, right? Amps. You'd be yeah. home sleeping. Absolutely. Somebody ride by with public that's enemy, right. blasting yeah, you out. Yeah. Before you even started getting tickets, oh, you hear like MC coming out of it. No doubt. You know what I mean? That's how. That's how it all started. What What did you guys set out to do? Because when Ultra Magnetic dropped Ego Tripping, it was so different. Was that purposely done? Well, I, I took, I took, I, I, I did what the average rapper won't do now, is copy somebody else. I did what the average rapper does now, is copy. He copied right. somebody else. I did what I should have done, be original. Right. I, I heard, like, Rock Kim out, you heard um, Shan out, you heard everybody coming out. I said, you know, we got to do something different. So I got what's said, and... We said we're going to use the biggest words ever possible. <laughs> and we're not going to make none of the words go together. And we're going to just rap on a funky beat. We're going right. to rap on substitution. By the time they learned that we wasn't rapping on the beat, the beat, that, that record was everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 10 years later, people say, y'all wasn't rhyming on that, that record. Uh-huh. But I said that record was hot though. It was hot because <laughs> didn't by the time they didn't, they didn't notice that. Right. right. So that was, that was a good thing that we did. And when we came out original, and that left me with a great uh, nostalgia in life to keep on doing shows and switch off. Because a lot of people can't come out now and cover that groundwork. Everybody that came from that era can still do shows. They still go on the road. Mm -hmm. They still got you know they still got long jeopardy. Mm -hmm. They still can make songs. And if you was, I think if we would start now, 
being that everything is so unoriginal, we wouldn't have been where we was. Makes sense. Everything. What are you now? Are you back to Cool Keith? Who I'm, you? I'm, well, I'm back to Cool Keith. I'm, I'm producing now. My number one producer tracks and stuff like that. I've been uh, programming, you know, since Sad and them didn't show me how to do beats. I started doing my <laughs> own music, making my own music. And right. Programming. I, I just moved on after, you know, Octagon took me into a whole new wave of people and opened a lot of different type of doors and right. situations for me and um, I started collaborating with bands and other groups that I never thought I would work with in my life. Right. When did you leave Ultra? I left Ultra in 92 when I went to LA. Why? Well, we just departed. I, I would, what happened was the Ultra Magnetic album was an album just to go do a solo album. It was just like, it was like we had to do that album to go solo. That's how it was when Pat was up there when you know Boogie Down Productions was yeah. at Sad House. That was the deal with um, Pat and all the investments of me and Sad have to do one album together. Okay. Like Ultra Magnetic was to go to my solo album. I was going for a solo album since way before Ultra Magnetic. Okay. But I had to do an album with a group. Well, you know, you got groups that do that too. You know. Yeah. Plus, it worked out good and. It came out his historical. Yeah, it did. You could so, say it worked out good. Yeah, I would say so. Maybe if I was <laughs> too, Brian. If I didn't go through Ultra Magnetic, I, you probably would never know who I was. Right. Probably. Yeah, yeah, but you and you and Seb were a special combination, man. That was like the the, the kind of the, the interaction between you guys was pretty dope, pretty unique. Right. It was a, it was a slight accident that we got together as that group. Like that group formed together like. Like you buying a team, like you know we had to, like LeBron came from Cleveland. Yeah, that that, 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 that that's how that group. Of, right? So were y'all were y'all friends? You and Seth? Oh, uh, me and Seth went to school together. Seth went to Clinton High School. He used to be in, um, play on the basketball team, and then um, I went to Clinton, um, and I ended up going to Seth's brother's house, which was called Mastermind Productions. Mm -hmm. uh, KRS One and them used to be up there. They was the Celebrity Three. They wasn't even Boogie Down Productions. The Celebrity Three. Yeah, yeah. Celebrity Three was um, um, KRS and um, I think um, it was like two more MCs. KRS yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. forgot they, Jerry they did, Lee and all, a they couple did that of advance. Uh, yeah, single advance yeah. Suite. So Scott used to come up there. Me and Scott we used to hang out more than probably KRS, probably. But KRS was with Celebrity Three. Okay. And Sad used to just do beats for them and. Like do the programs and they put stuff on top, like he did with um, Criminal Minded. Right. You know, that's why you hear like the bridge is over, and, uh -huh. and, and then you hear um, I bought a band. You hear like Funky got the same drum. Said so was good with that. You know that snare he was using. That, yeah. The Marley snare that everybody. Used to <laughs> t -t 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 the bridge, yeah. bridge. You know that yeah. snare. Yeah. So that's what that. That's why that music has sounded like the cousins. Yeah. The well, well. Uh, when I had KRS One uh, here, he said. When uh, Mr. Magic disrespected him, Molly left his drum patterns in the studio. And they took him, huh? <laughs> and they took oh, him. I would have took him, Thank too. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And used it for the bridges <laughs> open. No I doubt. remember the wildest thing that I think no rapper would ever probably do. I, I delivered Molly the 12 inches to Queensbridge Projects right in the door. And I think Big Daddy Kane and him was in the living room. Uh-huh. Uh, rap. So somebody... Uh, I think it was Craig G. Doing vocals right in the living room. Uh -huh. And Molly had his table sitting right by the kitchen that's real that's real that, that's real like yeah, you, that's got real your, you got your mixing board track. by the your kitchen four track. your four track <laughs> yeah. by the kitchen and that's how all of everybody you know when Seth was when, in the projects you know everybody used to come up there Dougie Fresh and all of them come up through his house and get beats and you all that talk everybody about the, had the beats up there right in the apartments making them them drum machines in the little you know in the project rooms wow there wasn't no studio like you know you go in the studio you would go into the you know, you going to somebody's grimy elevator yeah. and getting up and going up the steps. It's like yeah. you, it's like you going in the Caprini Gardens <laughs> and you going up there to do your vocals. Well, yeah. Sed you know had Sed was famous. The Ultra Lab had silver walls, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had um plastic on the walls, like some silver thing. It was called Mastermind Production, which which originally was an R and B production. Pat Sed's Pat brother was a good singer, like you know, like H yeah. Town and all of them. And, uh -huh. All the you know, Jodeci and all the lovers, you know, they was coming out with an album too, the, okay. the singing album. But they had to push the singing back because they felt that the the rap was strong at that time. They okay. might as well go with rap first. Okay, you know, rap take over on because R and B originally followed rap. Yeah, 
Because you know R&B wasn't strong without no, bad not, beats not at, at all. all. You know not at all. Not mm -hmm. when, when, and especially in the 90s, after the beats, in the late 80s and the beats, then that really kind of blew up Bobby Brown and everybody yeah, Mary, else. Mary and all them started yeah, Mary getting on the hip-hop records. But yeah. if they would have tried to come with them little crazy Lynn drums and all that, they yeah. would have been out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so they yeah, had to get sure. on, on the sure. drums. Now, how many, we was trying to count how many different record deals you had. How many did we get up to? Like, <laughs> 15? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I named you a Wild Pet. Wild Pitch Capital, uh, DreamWorks, DreamWorks, uh, Sony, Sony, um, uh, Bulk, Bulk, <laughs> Bulk, Bulk. Um, what else I was on? Um, traffic, uh, Speed, Okay, um, Fondalum, Fondalum, Right. Um, I even had little side deals. Um, I had all kinds of funky ass, funky ass, ass records. Ass, my own label. Right. But that don't count, right? No. Nah. <laughs> uh, you were exploiting yourself. I had partial. <laughs> I had all kinds of connecting record deals. I was a, I, I was a rapper with all kinds of record deals. So you were also a rapper that opened up a lot of doors for a lot of different genres, people. And genres and people, because you could really say that you know a lot of times we like to look back on on hip hop artists and say like who gave birth to them. Like I look at Nas and say that's absolutely Rakim. Mm -hmm. Rakim gave birth to him. So right, I would right, right. I would say big word rappers. Yeah. K Solo, yeah. cats like that, Cassidy. Yeah, you are definitely their father. Right. <laughs> well, well, um, you know, I, you I, father I, that I, style, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you know, like like you said, like all even dressing and fashion, like Outkast and yeah, and you know Missy Elliott. You know, Absolutely. I definitely took those. I used to see Cool Keith in L.A. with the black Elvis joint on. <laughs> You know, it's funny, I used to wear that wig on tour, and, you know, I'd be on my pre so i put it on every night, and I'd be, like, going to clubs with, you know, 3,000 Caucasian people waiting to see me, but after I get off stage, that wig, I'd just pour, like, 14 pounds of water out of it. Because like, I'm sweating my head. Like, like, I have one my, wig? my head you used to backup? just lose weight. Did you have backup wigs to the black I had one, one. I think I had one, but I always wore the other one. And I used to put that um, tape on my sideburns. <laughs> and it was elastic and I couldn't get it off. And I used to rub it and it just felt like gum on my sideburns every night. But I had to do it because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm making 5000 a night, right, on the road, and I'm counting on the bus. I said, just by wearing this wig, I'm making green, just putting this rubber piece, and people would fucking get mad if you didn't wear it. They'd yeah. be like, yo, I came to see you put that shit on your head. Absolutely. Tonight. You know what? Again, I wanted somebody else I wanted to mention because of the style of what you did, MF Doom. Sure, of yeah, course. absolutely. And the eclectic and, and, as, and as as eclectic as you are, let's play sex sim. Cool Keith in the building with me. And now joined by the one and only Professor Prince. Oh, word. Word. What up? Word, uh, what's up, it's, sir? It's good to see you. I'm good doing, to doing be, good, man. Good to be seen. But but you know, you know what's what's good about the situation is seeing two, I guess, quote, OGs, and they still look like they're teenagers. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Look at you, I you talking? <laughs> well, I did that till I could get the well, compliment in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, what is so you look like a damn teenager. <laughs> well, well, well you, had that good, you had that good, you, a lot of people from that time didn't age. Now you see the rappers now, they look older than you. <laughs> <laughs> and they, be glad that they, got, they got the nerve to say you old school. That's no such thing. If you look older than me, you know what kills me when you hear a dude be like, yo, when I was your age, and you say, how old are you? And he be like, I'm 29. <laughs> like, you shouldn't have said that. You should have kept your mouth shut. <laughs> you look 59. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the guy told me the other day. What? Guy, what? I was sitting somewhere, and guy was like, yo, hey, lover, man, how old are you? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm 51. Er, wow, 51, man, you old. I was like, well, how old are you? He's like, I'm 24. I said, then how do you explain the fact that I look better than you at 51 and you 24 looking fucked up? How do you, how do you explain that? You see that a lot, though. You see that a lot, though. A lot of drinking lean and shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. though. Yeah. There's a lot much. of motherfuckers that's 24 look 97. They do too much. I think it's the blunts, too. You was from back in the day, I think it's the blunts, Paul. You was from back in the day. We smoked out weed. And paper. I, 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 I don't smoke, but it's everything synthetic now. So, you know, so it's not GMO weed, you know. <laughs> so you know what it is that beer mess, that beer, you know, all that that licking, that wine and syrup mess up their skin. Yeah, it does. Bad. They smoke cigarettes. Yeah, they snort yeah, coke. Yeah, yeah, they drink yeah. Weed. Oh, yeah, they snort coke too. Yeah, a lot of new, like everybody's snorting coke now. You know? 
<laughs> Let this be a lesson, kids. Let this be a lesson. You wanna, <laughs> yes. If you want to be all right when you're yeah. in your face. Yeah, you know. And people dying early, too. They be like, they be like, oh, my friend died. <laughs> you be like, how old was he? He was 25. Yeah. I was like, man. <laughs> man, man. <laughs> Paul, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm great, actually. I'm, what's new, I'm man? I'm glad to be here, man. Tell Finally. me what's new. Tell me what's new with Prince Paul. I know you're cooking something up, because uh, you came in here and you said to Keith, you the hardest dude in the world to get a phone oh, call Oh, man. Back from. You, know, you know, the beautiful thing, I think about Prince Paul as I channel my inner Kanye right now. <laughs> it's the fact that I try to make work that I don't have to rap for food. You know what I'm right, saying? It's right. like I, I make projects that I like to make and I have fun. And, and uh, you know, right now I just finished this Brazilian record with a group called Repitech. I'm uh, doing this project. Uh, can't really talk about it, but doing this talk project coming out. Been working with Scion, um, doing some stuff online with them, interviewing people, and right. still doing gigs, man. I got a gig up in Boston, actually, at the Good Life. Boston. Boston. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> I'm driving my car. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be in D.C. Uh, on, in December, on New Year's. So, you know, it's, it's good. Life is good. Obama. <laughs> How did, who, who <laughs> came up with the idea of doing Three Feet High and Rising? Oh man, it, it was uh, all of us, uh, Poss, Dave, Mace, and myself, you know, uh -huh. it, it was, check it out, the budget that we had, it's amazing now, we did we did Three Feet High and Rising for $25,000. No way. No, no, and mind you, that paid our individual salaries, that paid the studio, that paid the yeah, engineer, no, was the tapes. Yeah, no back then. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, it was, a, it was a love project. We just came together. We all vibe. You know, Long Island guys. Man. Right, right. From Amityville and... Uh, one plus two. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And Tommy Boy made a whole lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Even with the lawsuits, they made a whole lot of money. Because y'all didn't clear nothing, did y'all? Uh, hey, 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 Tommy Boy. <laughs> y'all. I like, know who was like, supposed to clear stuff. broad... Yeah, very broad. ...accusation. Uh, the Tommy Boy. Yeah, we, we uh... You know, we gave them the samples, and, and, you know, I don't think nobody expected us to do as well as we did. So, you know, it's like, oh, we'll clear the things that, that seem to be popular, Hall of Notes, you know, uh, George Clinton and certain things. But right. when the record took off, it was like, whoa, like, we didn't know, yeah, you know, mind. these guys would do that well, and that's when the backlash came. <clears throat> right. Know? Yeah, absolutely. But, but it was good enough. It was able, I was able to buy my mom a house. So that's beautiful. That yeah. is, now that you look back on it, was it... Was that one of the greatest experiences for you? To be able to sit down with one group and just do it? Yeah, I mean, it was like, uh, I don't know. It's like God came down and just like, boom, I'm going to put you guys together and it's going to work perfectly and you're going to make this record. I mean, yeah, it, it's definitely, it's the highlight of my career. You know, it set everything else off. Set to Sonic was one part of my life, um, which was like my introduction to the music business, but De La right. Soul made me known as Prince Paul as an individual. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, so absolutely. it helped. Well, how did they, did they come to you? Did Tommy Boy come to you? Because who was doing most of the producing on Stessa Sonic? Was it you and Daddy O, or, or mostly was it Daddy O? It was, it was a, a collective. Like, okay. you'll, you'll never hear that. But it was a collective. It, it was all of us, especially when you go to the first album. Right. When you go to the second album, like, uh, Info Gear started getting a little... You know, when people start to understand what credits were and what production was, <laughs> oh, I did this. No, I did this. Right. I conceptualized this, so it kind of changed everything. But initially, it was just all of us sitting in a room. I think how classic hip-hop records are made. It's not made like that now. It's like, hey, your B-tape. Right. Yeah, your B I'm sorry, CD. Oh. Uh, uh, I, 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 talked, to, I had Sound a conversation, like. Keith, they called with Chuck D. Yeah. And Chuck D told me that the second album, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, was conceptualized and thought of when he was on tour with you guys. And y'all shared a bus. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and he said you guys went around, and he was like, well, they were doing this, that, and the third. You went to all the little towns, and Chuck saw how people were living and how the government affected everybody. So the uh, catalyst for that album was Public Enemy Against the World, well. Against the Government. And then he said to me, he said, three great albums. He said, the Stetson Sonic album. And takes a nation of millions and three feet high and rise, and all came off that damn bus. Yeah, that, that tour. That, I mean, one, the, 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 the initial experience was imagine Sets of Sonic, a big band, and Public Enemy all on one bus. <laughs> exactly. So, so, one, it was a struggle. That means none of us was making money at the time. Absolutely. And that, and, 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 and that being said, Chuck is right. Like, we were in the hoods. We were, we, you know, we weren't the, like the star attraction. So, we was able to walk amongst the people and hang right. out and kind of see things. And, and learn, you know, so right. just, that not, first, yeah. just not riding in no black SUV with dark windows. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, as a matter of fact, we had a, 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 I remember being with Stet, we was on a tour, we had a, a, a limo with no tent. 
<laughs> which, which was the worst thing to happen. <laughs> we, pull up, we pull up to the venue, and so, everybody's waving at us, looking. Right, right, right. right. So that, ain't no secret. Ain't yeah, no secret. man. So ain't I mean, no secret about your game. <laughs> that's opening act. No more with no tent. <laughs> <laughs> that's opening act kind of thing. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely right, opening right. act. So, so did De La Soul reach out to you? To you? Oh no, we we um I, I met first I knew uh Maceo. I knew all of them initially because we all went to high school together. Okay. And and that's basically how it started is um you know they had a rougher plug tune in. I listened to it. I was like, yo, I can make this better. Channel in my inner Kanye again. Right. And so we all you know we all got together and made a demo um with you know a little bit of money we had, scraped it up, um, played it around. Tommy Boy heard it. They wanted to sign it. Um, but we had other offers. We had an offer from Geffen. We had an offer from Profile. And I really wanted to go with Geffen, because Geffen was real. Was we'd have been the first band. Free ages, they was free ages. Yeah, man, it was a lot of money they were offering. <laughs> but you know, Tommy Boy, uh, you know, it, it, they they was more comfortable. People Tommy were more Boy. real back then too. If they was gonna sign you, they gonna sign you. Not as as of now, people just bullshit you around. It, they was gonna sign you. They was gonna sign you. Where? Yeah. Where they sign people now? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your greatest album you've ever produced? Man, greatest. Yeah. In terms of sales, my, no, my personal your favorite. Your personal favorite. Um, Grave Digger Six Feet Deep oh, would yeah, have to be my, my personal group. favorite. Because it was it was you know, at the time you gotta understand it was Rizza who was Prince Rakeem. That's right. Because that was like, you know, not the Rizza as we see him now, and it was poetic, you know, rest in peace, rest in you peace. know, and and and, and from Quan, and we was all guys that kind of got done by the music business. So it was like, you know, had had our little ups and downs, and was like, "Yo, was gonna... that before the Wu Tang?" So we uh, we demoed it out in '91. Wu Tang came out. Uh, RZA put out "Protect Your Neck" on his own, the, the single. Yeah. And and we was trying to get a deal at the time. We was trying to go the regular route. Right. So yes, it was pre Wu Tang. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. A lot of people don't know that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And then uh, then uh, Russell and them had the flatline. Oh yeah, the flatline. <laughs> you remember yeah, that? Yeah, that <laughs> oh, oh, I cleared that, that out. Flat Russell's line. nephew hated me. <laughs> Yo, I had a Come On Sun Bell on on High Ninety Seven. That's when all the dog pumps was coming out. Yeah, yeah. He kept saying, "Come on," you know. He kept saying, "You know what I'm saying." So I had the you know what I'm saying bell. So I used to ring it like a like a bell hop. That's yeah. every time you say you know what I'm saying, I hit the bell. Ding ding ding. I think Flavor Flav was like the king of you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, no saying, you know what I'm saying. All the time, but no, Russell saying. Russell's uh, nephew was part of the flatline. Oh yeah, and I shopped that thing to Russell too, and they're like, nah, nah, we don't want to deal with that. You know what the thing was when I was shopping Grave Diggers? They were like, these guys are has-beens and they're old school. I, at twenty at twenty six at the time, I was considered old school and played out. Wow. Because I started when I was 16, 17, so I was considered an old cat by the time I was that age. Yeah. Because everything is just now, trendy, now, 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 now. But it just it just got overboard. You right. Know? Where the popcorn, it microwave. The music yeah, is yeah microwave that's what I call now. I call it milk music. Milk music. Yeah. Milk music, because Make it's it only instant. good to the expiration date. Oh, yeah. and, then it's <laughs> like, and then it's sound one. You got to throw it away. But, I call but, it milk. But, but Kiss is still doing, i seen them doing um, right. Turkey. They did on um, Thanksgiving. And they looked better than any rock band out there. And and you just and you have the Rolling Stones that go on tour and Rolling tear Stones, shit down. And yeah. Megadeth and Metallica. Yeah, all of them. All of them tour together. And there would be a lot of young people in the audience that'll come out and see them. What kills me? You know, you got rappers that should be making records together, but they don't make records together. They scared. They let the labels separate them. Rock bands don't do that. They collaborate with each other. They don't even care. They'll open up for each other. They, go, they don't care who going last. Rap be worried about who, who headlining. And, <laughs> yo, you going on last. You should go on first. They got more ego than the rock world. I, I'd have to say, too, you know, rappers, too, they... A lot of old school guys, and I'm, I'm not going to... I hate to say old school, but a lot of those guys, they don't respect themselves either. Like, uh, oh, they'll come off real douchey. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, right. it's, it's kind of, <laughs> right. oh, you know, I created this, so I'm, I'm this type of dude. And it, they make it hard for people to relate to them. Well, a lot of dudes, yeah, like, well, like, like, you, like, like, they try to be somebody like, who's Like, you got to know yeah. you're a legend, but a lot of people be wanting to be called a legend. Like me, I still make brand new music. Like, like he still makes brand new music. Right. A lot of people still want to live out the legend status. And you don't, like they feel legend means to quit and you at the end and you know worship you like an old president. Or right. Something. A nope. lot of people don't like to be coined as, as old school. Yeah. No. Nah, yeah. Nobody. That's like you don't you don't do that. You just let. They try to change it. It's yeah. True school. It's yeah. Not true old school. school. Yeah. True. <laughs> nah, you're all 44. That, all that. Yeah. 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 But you know what's funny? Way, you know what's funny? In the future. You know what's funny? Yeah. They got it. It goes so trendy that. They call 2,000 artists old school. Yeah. 
Oh, it is now. Yeah. Oh, oh got it. so yeah. they don't even have a. They don't even know what they're doing. They only have a limit. They so, don't even have a limit to what they do. So I got. I have a question for you both. 